and we are live now with the uh, 18th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash Seth Rokage. Uh, this week, I am joined by Sarah, Corey, and Mesa. How are the three of you doing? I am Good. back. Doing well. I'm also back. Wait, who did we have last time? It, it was, was here me, last Ma- time. Yeah, it was me, Mesa, and Blaine, and, Bla- mm-hmm. and left kind of close to the end so me and mesa just just broed out about assassin's creed and kingdom hearts you missed out on the kingdom Hearts. how dare you by the way the two biggest fans of kingdom hearts were not here and you dare talk about it for half an hour it it was it was timely news i am a regressed fan and you know what I, i i i on twitter i was telling mesa this last week um, I knew for a fact that we did that story uh, due to two people who will not be named on the show. Um, they would take that little news story and, and blow it up to like 30, 40 minutes. And then what happened anyway, without both of you gone, the exact same fucking thing. 30, 40 minutes. Can like we, <laughs> can, can like, we at least comment on it, please? Can like me and me and Corey at least comment? Yes, I will spend you the get, full price to buy these games again. <laughs> you each get one uh, sentence. Yeah. Uh, I already, I already have every single, uh, every single collections for PS4 that is backwards compatible for my PS5, so I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, I will buy it again. (laughs) Damn it, Sarah! I just want to remind everyone at the top of the show (laughs) to go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. Everyone's uh, Twitter ads are on screen right here. They're also going to be available in the descriptions. Uh, game session is filmed live on Twitch at 6.30 p.m. PST. Later, shows up on podcast services and on YouTube, both as uh, the full show as well as individual segments for easier digestion. And Twitter is the best place to probably keep up to date with every single one of us. Um, so with that, um, let's just going to jump straight on into the news. So this is probably going to be a predominantly uh, Sarah segment. Do you want to just go ahead and dive into... Or here, l- let me give a brief little outline of the BlizzCon stuff, and then you can Con, dive into Blizzcon, it. BlizzCon. <laughs> so, so I'm just going to give a brief outline of stuff. Uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected was announced. Uh, World of Warcraft Shadowlands 9.1 patch Change of Domination was announced. Uh, the, the, a Diablo 4 trailer was shown showing the Rogue class. Uh, World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic Sp- the classic expansion has been announced. Uh, Blizzard Arcane Collection, which is some of the three uh, original Blizzard games. Uh, Hearthstone, Forge, and Barons expansion and Mercenaries mode revealed. Uh, slew of Overwatch 2 info. And I think that's about it. Um, do you want to go in and dive into Diablo 2 first? Yeah. Okay. So um, this has been in the works for like a really long time. People have been hinting towards this pretty much since like the beginning of last year. And Blizzard finally confirmed that it's a real thing. Uh, so, for those who don't know, Blizzard has remastered their games in the past. Uh, StarCraft 1 was the first one, which was incredibly well received. It has the Halo feature that allows you to switch back to original graphics, but it's pretty much just the base StarCraft with like quality of life in- improvements, which is what the game needed. Uh, and that's what Diablo 2 needed. Uh, you, for, the, for, for the record, yes, we know that Warcraft 3 was a total disaster. We understand this. But joke's on you, people. Blizzard's not even working on this one. Well, they are just a lot lower of a of an attempt. It's actually Vicarious Visions doing this. So, yes, the Tony Hawk Pro, Pro Skater 1 and 2 H, HD people, uh, they apparently start working on this as soon as Tony Hawk went gold last year. So they've been like pretty much boots to the ground working on this. Um... It's basically Diablo 2. Uh, original source code. The only changes that have been made to it are quality of life improvements. Uh, so, so like saving whenever you want. Uh, online co-op. Uh, leaderboard fixed. PV, PvP's fixed. The graphics have gotten an incredible over overhaul. Uh, from what from was described in in a friend of ours Sam's article, they basically said. Um, if I remember correctly, the the new version of Diablo 2 is the puppet, while the base game is the puppeteer. So they're basically slapping that new shit on top of the old stuff, and they basically changed nothing else source code-wise, so the game is pretty much the same, just with better improvements to it. Uh, it's launching on everything, which is baffling. So PS4, PS5, Series X, Series S, Xbox One, Switch... Hell yeah, Switch version and PC. It doesn't have a date, just coming out in 2021. Uh, believe maybe end of the year, but they, but they didn't give any confirmations on that. 
Um, but yeah, if he, you're going to get to play Diablo 2 while Blizzard's like, hey, got to wait another year, maybe for Diablo 4. Sorry. No, you know, that game looks like ass too. <laughs> I have a couple, or I guess like one statement, then one question. Uh, one of the things yeah. that pops out to me, which is something I loved about the um, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition, which allows you to toggle between the classic graphics and the newly improved ones. And like, I'll, I'll usually, in, in, uh, for the way that they've done it in Halo, for Halo 1 and 2, I'll, I'll typically play in the newer graphics, but being able to swap on the fly without having to go through like an options menu is really nice just to see how far gaming has come. And uh, I, I guess a question I have is, so I have played a maybe like 10 hours or so of Diablo 3. What should people that haven't played Diablo 2 expect going back to Diablo 2? It's a lot it, darker. <laughs> visually or thematically? Content wise, content. content wise, it is a lot darker. It's I kind of joke that it's that late 90s, early 2000s edgy dark. So the like... So the options to pick stuff in like a settings menu are spinning pentagrams <laughs> and there's like human sacrifices and obviously Diablo plays like a big, a big role in it. While in Diablo three, it was a lot more like lighter, darker fantasy kind of while Diablo two was just flat out incredibly dark. Um, it's, it's weird because Diablo three takes what was really good in Diablo two and like emphasizes it. But with Diablo two, you're basically going back to what many consider one of the best games of all time. And what the, the big thing that I think people should take away from blizzard re releasing Diablo two is that they've already been on record saying that Diablo two was a huge influence on what Diablo four is going to be content wise story wise. So them remastering it is definitely a win-win especially getting a team on it that knows how to remaster stuff like for those who have not played it tony hawk pro, pro skater one and two kicked a lot of ass it was very good it was hit, it hit in that nostalgia kick very very it well it really did especially yeah. the soundtrack and the fact that they penned vicarious to come and and basically do this is incredibly smart of them incredibly because again we saw what happened with warcraft 3 which uh uh did a burning pile of garbage sadly so the fact that blizzard was like okay we fucked up we know uh here's just a better one a couple more details on it um it's gonna be goddamn 40 dollars at launch which is a gosh darn steal literally on everything by the way that also counts hopefully counts on switch it's gonna be 40 dollars uh, remastered ground up cutscenes. So basically, what they did with uh, StarCraft as well, they're basically going to redo the cutscenes from the ground up, which many say was one of the, was one of the most okay parts of the Warcraft Three remaster. Uh, a technical alpha did start sign ups. You can go to Diablo 2's official website to sign up for that. You need a Battle.net account though, as it's PC only. Um, where is it? Is it there? We go. Uh, cross cross progress and cross play on consoles that support it so you can basically start a game on pc as long as you have your battle net hooked up to your consoles which for most of you who play overwatch you already do uh you could basically take a character from the pc and say put it on the x xbox which i think was a was a uh was like a um, example that that they give they haven't confirmed crossplay between consoles though just between PC and consoles, the consoles that support it any, any way. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm just very excited about this. Me and, uh, co-host kind of co-host best friend, co-host Blaine have actually started a Diablo two playthrough. Uh, and yeah, it's 20 years old. <laughs> it's, I'm glad that this remaster is happening because it definitely needs it. And it'll be fun for people who've never experienced this to actually jump into it and play it because it is a lot of fun, even being 20 years old. And sometimes we need that dark edgy demon stuff in our lives. So, so question for the panelists, uh, if you're going to pick this up and I, I maybe this, this question isn't as important now that it's cross uh, progress and cross play, but what platform are you planning on getting it on or platforms? PlayStation 5 and Switch. <laughs> I'm thinking of either doing that because 
it, it'd be nice having on a TV and my girlfriend's here so we can play co-op on the same TV. But um, I've never played Diablo no. on a PC, and apparently that that's all uh, done via mouse clicking, which so seems really odd. fast. There is no couch co-op. They did confirm what? that there's no couch couch co-op Boo. because attempting to mess with the source code to allow couch co-op broke stuff. So and 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 they didn't want to have to go through and edit the original source code of it, and it just didn't work. So they could not get couch co-op working without breaking the original source code. I think that's fair, but like, like so much of the appeal of the uh, console versions of Diablo three was specifically that couch co-op part. Like that's how I played the entirety of. I didn't finish Diablo three, but that's the entirety of how I played that game, and it was fun. Finish Diablo like three; it's really really good. Hmm. Please. Uh, especially the DLC, the Reaper of Souls. Yeah, it's, it's really also good. really good. Yeah. Any uh, thoughts, Mesa? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, just uh, you know, uh, these, these games tend not to be my speed, so um, I probably I probably won't be um, picking it up. But um, I'm happy for every. I know Diablo Two is on that on the list, like the list of the the ones that mean the most. So. Um, I'm happy for those people who, you know, who, who get, especially from Vicarious Visions. I have no doubt that that remake is going to be really, really good. So, quick question before we move on to the other games. Um, I also have something to say before we move on. Sure. Hey. Um, does anyone necessarily hold Diablo one in the same regard as Diablo two, or is it basically no. just play Diablo two? <laughs> just play Diablo two. Okay. <laughs> It's like if you want that nostalgia kick in the butt, go ahead. But I've been told by many people they're like, just don't touch Diablo one. So they're like, just play Diablo two. I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> so um, it's funny because I have, I do have some experience with Diablo two, though I never played it myself. Um, it, it 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 it's somewhat nostalgic to me because I saw like I would see a friend playing like the old Warcraft games and old uh, uh, Diablo 2 and, and old Starcraft and stuff like that. Um, I was always the watcher. I never actually played them because I didn't have a, a computer to play them on. There was a family computer, but I never actually, you know, thought to play those games. Um, and uh, so I'm excited for Diablo 2 to come out, the remaster version, so I can actually go and play diablo 2 for the first time and experience it now with updated graphics and interface and cutscenes and all that stuff yeah if uh for those who want to see what the new update graphics are going to look like the official site has one of those like slider screens that like lets you move on like gifs of the old version and the new version oh i it's saw the trailer night though, it and was... day. yeah it is same it's insane yeah and it also it's it's really interesting because you can actually take diablo 2 with the remaster of of what it looks like now and kind of put it next to what we've seen so far of diablo 4 and it seems like the same sort of dark edgy realistic kind of uh gritty look that they're going for for both diablo for for both Diablo 2 remaster and Diablo yeah, 4. Yeah, they're, they're taking yeah, like the same Blizzard, aesthetic cues. Um was totally it gone on record saying that they are like they are yeah. taking the same Is cues it, because because so really really quick people were pissed when Diablo 4, 2 went from like dark edgy cannibal cultish spinning pentagram save icons to Diablo 3's kind of like not really darkish almost cart fantasy. almost cartoonish. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. That was that was what people got kind of pissed about, and Blizzard heard that, and they were like, "Okay, D four, you're getting cults, you're getting pentagrams, you're getting human sacrifices, you're getting the devil." Like, <laughs> they're like, they're like you're basically getting what. Plus, they're even following after Diablo two story closer with Diablo four than Diablo three. Well, because Diablo and that's two not going to is... make sense to people, but I promise it does. Well, because because before Diablo three, usually the protagonists are just regular people who have very heightened skills whereas in diablo 3 you're like a nephilim and so you're already ultimately powerful and i feel i don't know i feel like i feel like you're too powerful in diablo 3 
you know, versus Diablo, Diablo two, from what I hear. And now the upcoming Diablo four, you're more of just like a realistic person just trying to get through hordes of demons. You also steal people's ears. I'm going to say that without, without a contract. Um, what was that about the priest steal. collecting ears? Oh, that was weird. Yeah. So that's Sounds actually like a earful. PvP. That's a PvP me- mechanic from Diablo 2. Uh, oh. You, when, 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 when you would down uh, another player character, you can loot their ears as currency. And the rogue in Diablo 4 is going to have an actual thing where they can take people's ears as like a throwback to oh, Diablo 2. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So I don't know what you can buy with ears. I don't know what you can buy with ears. But yeah, ears are going to play part in the rogue stuff. But let's move on to Warcraft so I can talk more. Because okay. Wait, good, shit, quick, good shit. You guys don't buy things with, with human ears? Well, no, because Is they make my normal? wallet all wet and gross, <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> That's why you have to dry them out like beef jerky, and if you get hungry, you can just nibble on it. All right, who let, who let Jose out of his padded room? <laughs> much, much anyway, much. go ahead and talk about WoW. <laughs> Warcraft, Warcraft. Okay, so um, really quick, I'm going to bring up Warcraft Classic for those who care. Burning Crusade is being added to Warcraft Classic, but it's actually going to be different. Um there is quality of life improvements coming to Burning Crusade because let's just be real here. Burning Crusade is one of the worst expansions to have to go through. Um, so they are, they are kind of breaking their mold and putting quality of life improvements into it. But it's going to be very interesting. When you get Burning Crusade Classic, you actually have the option of staying in base World of Warcraft Classic and going straight to Burning Crusade because of those quality of life in, in improvements. So people don't have to go straight into Burning Crusade. You can stay in normal classic. But whatever character you take into Burning Crusade is going to be in that area. So they're going to have the quality of life improvements and everything like that. I don't exactly know what that means as I'm not a classic player. But people are kind of iffy on that because they were hoping that they would just put in Burning Crusade as just Burning Crusade without any like quality of life things added to it. But they did confirm that some quality of life things are being added to it. I don't exactly remember if they said what. I get that um, the idea behind it is supposed to be like, yes, this is what it was like back then, but quality of life improvement, like not wanting some of those, that just strikes me as odd. It's because classic players are nuts. I say that in a loving way possible. You guys are nuts. You guys (laughs) can convince convince Blizzard to make a classic version of WoW because you guys are nuts. Um, But so World of Warcraft uh, 9.1 is the next big Shadowlands update. It's called Chains of Domination. It is pretty much um, taking the fight to the Jailer if you play Shadowlands. Uh, There's a brand new area being added to the mall. It's called Corthia. It has rock lizards that look adorable. Um, A whole new Covenant campaign is being added to the game. That's going to be nothing to no one on this panel, but it means a lot to me. Um, there is one one new raid coming out, which is the Torghast raid, which, oh no, uh, that supposedly is going to have, like, bosses from, like, the spirit of some of the most evil people that have walked Azeroth, which is kind of nuts, because that, because there's, there, there, there's hints that Blizzard is looking for people to, like, give them, like, ideas on who to bring back as a raid boss, so, so that's kinda, incredibly interesting. So it's kind of like a revisiting through like all the classic enemies throughout kind of. WoW lore. Kind of. That, it, that's not the whole thing, but that might be some of them. And there's been mm. rumors that Blizzard wants people to be like, hey, who do you hate the most and want to kill again type of thing. So, of course, that could go either really fun or terribly wrong because people could start just naming terrible, terrible enemies that everyone hates, like fighting wise. Um, mm. Uh. There was a cinematic posted. It's very painful mentally. I'm not going to discuss it because no one's going to get the like crazy implications of it. But for those who played Wrath of the Lich King, oh boy, we are back in hell again, even though we've been in hell. I, I'm curious. Um, can, you, can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, baby boy Anduin's now in his emo phase and he kills somebody. <laughs> that means nothing to no one here. But uh, he basically looks like the Lich King, and he's kind of corrupted, even though he seems to be under some sort of mind control, because it becomes that Simpsons meme where it's like, here in the split second, you could see where his, where his heart breaks in half, because you basically can. 
Um, it's pretty much becoming, oh god, now we gotta save who's leading the alliance right now. Because WoW is taking a dark direction, guys. I, at least we think it is. And if fans are thinking what, what they're thinking, it ends up becoming true. Uh, WoW is going to go into some dark tides, and I am here for it. Because WoW has been too bright and happy as of recent past. You play Alliance, of course everything's bright and happy. Play the Horde. Look us alone! <laughs> We are trying. I, Our I king a, now is glitchy, and it's weird. I had a I had a friend I wanted to bring on the show because he's a giant uh, wow nut, but he admitted he's too shy to come on. And love you, buddy. Uh, but his speculation was that Anduin is basically going to become the new Lich King. Does- that is mine also, because in WoW lore, the world needs a Lich King, because that's the kingpin that stops the world of the dead from co- going into the world of the living, the the... The, the job of being the Lich King is not a fun one. You're basically like the human key stopping everything from just happening what happens in Shadowlands. They're, they're so, like the Luke Cage of, of the uh, Shadow World. Kind of. Uh, so people are under the impression that Anduin's going to freak, freak the fuck out. How can I be king if I've murdered people and then become the Lich King? My crazy theory Trallian becomes the leader of the of, of the alliance, brings the alliance into a tyrannical government age, sends us into space and warfare. That's your next expansion. Blizzard, I demand ten dollars if I just called it. But that's my crazy speculation. Again, that means nothing to no one here. But people are speculating like crazy because now Blizzard's like, you get no release date. <laughs> just wait for it. Well, I think so, you mentioned it, and this is, is going to go for like all the other future. I, I guess game stuff in general, but but also just specifically Blizzard. Uh, COVID is still a thing. Um, yeah. And everything's pushed back. So, well, so don't get the reason, too out of time. The reason why I said COVID was a thing is really important here is because originally when Shadowlands came out, Blizzard was like, oh, we might add more customization options. We might add more allied races. We might add more covenants. And then they recently come out and say that they aren't doing that and people are pissed. What people need to realize is Blizzard said they might do that. COVID's a thing. Blizzard's hell-bent on getting this next update done. If they don't have the time to set aside, like, 20 people into making new um, making new customization options or setting aside 100 people to make a brand new covenant or setting aside any number of people to make allied races, that's fine. I would rather want 9.1 and get all the crazy shit that's going to happen in it then be like, oh, look, I have three new hairstyles for this one alt I never play. Like, to me, it makes a lot more sense for Blizzard just to get boots on the ground and continue with 9.1 and not worry about any of the things that they said they might do when Shadowlands launch. And people need to realize that. Like, COVID is still a thing. They're still working from home. At BlizzCon, they actually discussed how working from home wasn't easy for the first couple of weeks. Like they had to learn how to do it. And I just Mm -hmm. think people aren't exactly realizing that. I I think it it extremely differs from studio to studio. Like some teams are able to transition far more seamlessly. Like I believe Bungie was one of the first ones to fully transition to working from home. And they've been able to push out content on a regular basis, but that's just not the scenario for every studio in the world. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many technical hurdles, so many uh, contracts, have so many. D- uh, um, I almost said DMC. Fucking. Uh, <laughs> but what's N- NDA stuff? Like the other people, like living in someone's house. Like, hey, you're working on this confidential shit. Do you have roommates? Do you have all your family me- stuff like that? It's it, there's a lot going on. Uh, let yeah, alone all the and, technical hurdles. And yeah, Blizzard actually picked up working from home pretty quickly, but they had to push back the the beta for Shadowlands, and they had to push back the release date and the pre-patch. But they had said, it's literally because we're still getting used to working in COVID, and the fact that they're now getting used to it, I, I would just rather let them finish nine 9.1 than start adding random shit into it. Like, I don't care. Like, I get that a lot of people are like, oh, wow, we're actually getting customization options, and wow, that makes sense. Honestly, I'd rather them work on 9.1 and get it done good and give me a kick-ass giant update to the expansion than have it come out and be like, oh, this raid's fine. <laughs> like, no, I want I want this raid to be intense. Like, this might just be me speaking from I don't give a shit about customization in games in general. I realize, like, that's a very big thing a lot of people well, care about. But I would rather have 
the big meaty piece of content you're going to be playing versus let's let's push everything else back so you can customize a character but that that's just the one thing the one thing i will say about that though is to give people to put people into some perspective wow has been wow is more than 15 years old just last year wow got different skin tones other than white and slightly more white for human players or for like human characters it took them 15 plus years to add different skin tones on for human characters and so yes customization matters Uh, we could obviously use more i want wow to have more not just for human characters but for other races too but at the same time you have to remember the type of like situation game development is in because of covid like it's they're like while saying yeah we want to add more customization options they added 150 plus last year like 150 plus customization options were added on, on a single update and it's like, that's awesome. That's great. Wow is finally giving us more skin tones. Wow is finally giving us more like hair. Like, that's awesome. I am here for it. But at this point in time, me and a lot of other people just want 9.1 to be good because Shadowlands was amazing. Shadowlands brought more than a million other people into Wow. And it was one of the best expansions of recent memory, especially after how kind of mediocre Battle for Azeroth was and if they fuck up the first biggest update the game has after launch that's gonna really kill the player base and i don't think blizzard needs that right now so so i think as a as a person who recently and i say recently like a few months ago kind of sort of got back into wow after like nearly a decade i have not i have not been in wow since the release of like the lich king um and i think that was one of the first expansions i'm pretty sure that was the second that was the second expansion okay and so to be honest as much as i really want to get into wow i feel compelled to understand all of the story oh and that is a and it's yeah. overwhelming and it's overwhelming because <laughs> yeah. i feel like if i don't understand all of the backstory then i'm not going to understand shadowlands i mean Corey, if you thought it was complicated keeping up with these alliances between all these different factions they go into space Corey. they fight giant <laughs> space demon monster yes. beings oh my lord and see what i mean I like i want to i want more than anything to be to be so enthralled with world of warcraft again as much as you, you are Sarah. so enthralled <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. i'm pretty sure this is thrall this might be sorrow fade but i'm 99 percent sure it's thrall that, so did you read it yeah. is that the excited. first pun you've made excited. on this show yeah because i'm wearing my shirt <laughs> yeah. but, but no. you get what i but you get what yeah. i'm saying right like yeah. i really want it's to be excited it is so intimidating and so it's like what would you say to people who are just jumping back in or like even new players who are just jumping into world of warcraft world of warcraft for the first time like what would you even say to them to to encourage them to stay um before you answer that sir i want to add one more thing that you can throw into your answer uh so i was I really wanted to get into Shadowlands and I played like 20 hours or so of it. My issue is that I just simply have too many other games in my backlog that are like primarily single player and I can't justify the time sink that is Shadowlands. Yep. So what would you recommend to people that are in a similar position? So one thing I, I'll answer that question first. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask Mesa as someone who I don't know if you know anything about WoW, as uh, someone who just heard everything that I just said, and is most likely very confused and is probably asking yourself, what the fuck is a Lich King? For audio Do listeners, you have any uh, that's, that's, that's that that's that that's that game that was referenced in uh in uh, 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 uh X-Men uh, the Wolverine game. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, yeah. I mean yeah, obviously the Lich King King was the one that... I'm I mean, honestly... dorks. I think I think they're gonna have way more pertinent questions than I will. <laughs> I think I think I think I think I think they should be higher on the list than me. I don't I don't really have anything I don't feel like I have anything to add. Okay. Because I mean I'll totally answer your question. Um to answer Jose's question first, 
Yes, WoW is a big under undertaking. As someone who plays WoW and plays other games at the same time, it's a huge un- undertaking. But what I will say is WoW at the moment, <clears throat> oh, sorry, has never been more... E- oh, for first all, Glorious War, yes, Sylvanas is bad. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh the one thing I will say is that WoW, as of right now, is the best time to jump in and not feel like you need to beat everything in your first, like, couple of days playing. They've made it to where catch-up is some of the easiest shit right right now to catch up with, like, to catch up with, like, uh, new content. Uh, you, you gain currency every day if you're, like, oh, sorry about that. If you're, like, behind you gain currency every day uh which definitely helps and the mission structure now they've actually edited how you get quest you 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 you'll know what quests are important story quests they actually have that, a different icon that is such a big change i am so fucking surprised i it took them this long to put in yeah right because i'd be in like i'd be in zones <laughs> just like i don't know which one actually progresses so I'm just doing all the tiny little ones, just like get four bear pelts. I'm like, I'm sure this doesn't contribute to the main story, but I don't know. So I just got to do it. Mm-hmm. That's um, that's the biggest change is they actually tell you what quest or story quest now. And you don't need to do every side quest. I have not done every side quest yet because I'm focusing on end game shit. You don't have to thankfully with Shadowlands, you don't have to focus on every side side quest now. Which is amazing. I mean, you don't need to waste your time getting five bear pelts that maybe drop forty five percent of the, of every bear that you kill. Forty five percent is pretty like, generous by WoW standards. Yeah, which can be pretty pretty uh, tedious. Um, to answer Corey's question, yes, the story is a lot. Oh my god, the story is overwhelming as hell. But the way that WoW does it now to where um, when you buy the game and you have your sub sub subscription, you get every expansion up to Shadowlands free. You can choose them the order that you want to do them. But you, ha- but you can only start Shadowlands once you hit level 50 and once you buy it. For Shadowlands, it may seem like you have to... Oh, oh, sorry, you have to play every expansion up to that. You don't personally and people can fight me on this as someone who started playing wild during like legion and stuff you only have to play the only expansions i would tell someone to play before they play shadow lands is wrath of the lich king battle for azeroth and if you want to know what happens in between those look up videos on the internet there's so many great videos of people that have gone through wild story in an easy sit down grab yourself like a like a cup of tea and like and like and like a bag of chips and just sit down and watch the rest of this story i highly recommend you play wrath of the lich king and battle for azeroth though especially because battle for azeroth and it's and it's other like major updates led directly into shadowlands so those are very yeah. lengthy adventures to be had. yeah it is but at the same time if you want to get the most out of what shadowlands is doing you wrath of the lich king and battle for azeroth just do those and i know it sounds lengthy but at least i'm not telling you to play every single goddamn wow expansion because i could hmm. i could be that person to play, you know what just play every goddamn wow expansion no i'm saying i'm saying this as someone to where if you just want to have a base knowledge of what's going on in shadowlands wrath bfa then go on to that especially i think if you buy shadowlands if you buy like the 60 dollar version or 70 dollar version of it you get a free token that can boost a character up to level 50 and instantly go into it let's see uh do you want to touch on diablo 4 real quick or is there even Uh, too much to speak of there i mean brand new class announcement is the rogue uh she looks cool as hell she kind of looks like she plays like the demon hunter from diablo 3 and she collects ears um I guess there was like a story or there was a panel that kind of talked Diablo 4 stuff. I didn't watch it, uh, but I think you can watch it on demand for the next couple days. Um, uh, we're most likely not getting Diablo 4 until like 2022 at the earliest. <laughs> like, especially because they flat out said the game isn't coming out in 2021. We all kind of figured that already. I think the, um, strongest, if I had to, 
I think the strongest thing that game's cred is that it has Rod Ferguson on it. Oh, he's hell pretty, yeah. He's, he's pretty famously it. known throughout the industry for like being the fixer. Like he came on to help um, Infinite, uh, Bioshock Infinite out when it was like going through a lot of production issues. And he went over to, uh, no, he, he was originally at Epic, uh, kind of helping steer the Gears of War franchise with uh, she's, with she's the reason that Gears 1 got finished. Yeah, like he is the reason that Gears One got finished. We'd have never had Gears of War if Rod Ferguson hadn't been brought in to like be like, we gotta fix this shit, get it out. Like, we hey, never had Gears, that Gears Four and Five were directly under him, and I think those are probably the best playing in the series. Plus, uh, he also he, he, said huh? he's a fucking behemoth of the industry, so I trust he anything that he's said working on. Before he would never leave the co the coalition on, until A, he knew that they had a solid plan on where gears was going and B unless he found a project that he felt that he would fit in the best with and he left for Diablo. So my guess is was, I don't want to say this is something rude. Blizzard might've been having the same issue that gears was having at the beginning, where they're like, we need someone to get this game on track. Cause we don't know not that they don't know what the fuck they're doing, but maybe they were just super broad and they're like, we need someone to like smush us into like a line and just get us going. And my guess is that's why they hired Rod. But they're like, probably also gave him a nice your fat paycheck. You well, that and also again, Rod said that he would never move on unless he was given a project that he knew that he could like. He also put um, he fit in Batista in a gears. So there's the huh. He also put Batista in a gears. Yes, um, but yeah, I feel like Rod is perfect on Diablo, and I'm really excited to see what he can do to make it streamlined and probably make it like really good in the process. Like Diablo 4, a lot of people seem to be worried about it. I'm not. Blizzard is a company that takes its time on stuff. And they flat out told us from the beginning that the game isn't coming out for a long time. But the one thing I will say that they're at least doing is they're at least um, giving us quarterly updates. So for people who don't know, every quarter, and they've been doing this since they announced it, every quarter Blizzard puts out a huge fucking blog post that all that goes over something different every single time i think the last one was the skill trees which is a literal fucking tree like your skills are on a literal tree that like starts that starts at the, at the bottom and like branches its way out and they also went into the new cannibal enemy class like they literally had like deep dives and short videos like they're actively updating people on this game's development so like the, i mean you could say that like at least they're not being quiet the whole time <laughs> At least they're actually, like, talking about what, what they're doing and showing us progress. So, I mean, I will say good on them for at least, like, keeping us updated and stuff. Do I believe Diablo 4 was announced too early? No. Um, I think it was very strategically <laughs> announced in a Blitz-like mm -hmm. fashion. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. I think Overwatch 2 was announced too early. I don't think Diablo 4 was, though, because there have been rumors that they've been working on that since Reaper Souls shipped for Diablo 3, and that was, like, seven six years ago mm -hmm. so that's that's just what i'm thinking is the game is it was not announced too early are they still in active development yes at least they're keeping us updated they could I mean, like, they, they could be radio silent i mean even look between the, the time between diablo 2 and 3 um diablo 3 came out like what 2012 i want to say i don't remember it was either 2011 or 2012 i remember that I just remember uh, the auction house shit. <laughs> yeah. People getting so pissed at the auction house, and they're, they're like, "Okay, okay, we'll just take it out. It's not there anymore." <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean Diablo Four, the rogue looks really cool as a demon hunter player. I'll most likely play as the rogue because that looks like the class that's the closest to it. And I want to collect people's ears. I want to take that, their ears. I, that's creepy. I would no. like to. I would like to. I would like to collect your ears, please. Mm -hmm. No, no, do and that. Sell them to creepy, to creepy ass churches. <laughs> the way you're you're talking about doing this a lot, it's quite the earful. Takes her ambition. Stop. <laughs> um, um, so I've not played Overwatch in a while. Yes. So I'm. Also, I don't play Hearthstone. Please don't ask me to All talk right. about Hearthstone. So I think <laughs> I'm probably the one that's most recently played Overwatch. I went on a little binge the last two weeks. Um, I, the last time I played I, was like seven months ago. I, I downloaded, I, played three games, and then uninstalled. <laughs> I, I don't remember if it was on this show, but I recall basically putting my thoughts on Overwatch 1 being, or I'm sorry, Overwatch 2 being 
there's no real reason why this can't just be patched into Overwatch 1 as it is, make it a full games as a service the way it has been. But um, let's just go over like some of the stuff that they've uh, announced or added. Uh, there's new character Sojourn. Um, Overwatch's, Overwatch 2's PvP leans heavily on the existing formula, but will have experimental changes. Uh, there's now roll passive, which are roll passives, which are background abilities that affect entire classes of characters. So the characters are segmented into like tank damage. It uh, used to be like attack uh, and defense, so they kind of just rolled it into one for whatever reason. And then uh, support, which is like the healers. So tanks get a passive that reduces knockback. Um, they also produce less alt charges for enemies attacking them, so you can't just like uh, specifically target a tank just to build up your supers. Um, the damage class gets an increased movement speed and support uh, gets an automatic slow healing, kind of similar to what Mercy already has in the game, albeit to a lesser extent. Uh, tank characters are being evaluated to make them more suitable for up close encounters versus just absorbing damage. Um, they also announced the hero missions mode, which is kind of like the co-op PVE and it's designed to uh, level up your characters and it has hundreds of missions that you can apparently play a uh, quote night after night without it, without it feeling like a grind. So whether those are going to be uh, procedurally generated or they're going to continually roll some new ones out on a, on a weekly daily basis, whatever it may be. And uh, each existing multiplayer map will be used for hero missions. So it won't necessarily be like, uh, map specifically designed for it if that makes any sense mm -hmm. um, the campaign is going to have cinematic intros and outros for each mission uh, with each mission taking place in a gigantic custom built map uh, but one thing that they announced that I'm maybe not so much a fan of is uh, hero lineups aren't set for missions so you'll kind of have like a pool that you can choose from for any given mission uh, what I probably would have preferred was to have missions very specifically tailor made for each individual character to like to play to their strengths. Um, I just feel like that could have provided for more dynamic, more individual levels. It's like if you're playing Trace, you're playing something where you have to like avoid obstacles, maybe do some platforming, stuff like that. And um, I guess the last one I'll just put on here. Uh, they also introduced hero progression, which uh, each hero will have separate talent trees with uh, specific builds, like going just towards the tail end of each one. And it's set to allow for dynamic changes to existing character builds for some pretty crazy um, divergences from one another, depending on how you spec into them to make... So even if you're playing the same hero, they're going to give two different... Not maybe two completely different play styles, but enough to separate them. Um... They also put out some of the new character models for Overwatch 2, mm. and they look pretty fucking similar to Overwatch yeah. 1. With the notable difference, they made they made McCree white. White. Why? Well, I mean, so, the one thing I did... It's a pandemic! He's been inside, okay? <laughs> um, he just doesn't have a tan. It's fine. Is that someone posted screenshots from the actual footage that they, sh that they showed, and then the, like, white room character spin thing and McCree's skin does look darker in the cutscenes from the actual game so people don't know whether it's just like the lighting in the room that they put the model in or like no one has any idea but like someone actually went and like screenshotted him in the cutscenes and pointed out like his skin is darker in the cutscenes but he's pure white in this like in this like image that they took so it's really weird it's like people don't exactly know what's going on now. I guess just to go I was like what is happening. I guess just to go bullet point by bullet point. What does everyone think of the uh model? I'm using air quotes for audio listeners, the uh model changes. Um they feel some of them feel like um just 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 um there's a couple that that are are I think I think um Widowmakers is actually a, a fairly like decent like 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 it feels like a time skip almost, but then there's like, um, but then there's Reaper, which is like, he, that, that's the, that's the same boy, that's the same boy as last time. Reaper <laughs> seventy six has a beard. Their armor is like slightly pointier at certain divot points. Yeah. Soldier seventy six mm -hmm. has a beard. Yeah, I'm really excited like for cool, like bushy beard. I'm excited for Overwatch too. Because I'm hoping I'm hoping we finally get to know why Lucio is there. 
He's just trying to make some beats, dude. <laughs> that game has been out for five years, I believe, at this point, and we don't know why Lucio is there. He's just vibing. Why? That's that's true. He, uh, vibe. Let him he vibe, literally man. have not expanded on his story one time whatsoever. Oh, mm-hmm. um, but Lucio's is pretty fun, so I guess we got those. <laughs> That um, cereal tasted disgusting, and I bought that cereal. <laughs> so I, I guess let's just go into like what's separating this from what already exists in Overwatch One. What does everyone think about um, the hero progression and I guess the campaign? I, I think I probably already gave my thoughts. Where this could probably just be rolled into Overwatch One as is. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, most I'm, of it is, isn't it? Most of it is, isn't it? I mean, they're not going to uh, have the campaign the hero progression. All the multiplayer the, stuff is yeah. being rolled into Overwatch One. Yeah. Well, you gotta you get the campaign and the updated graphics and everything. You need to buy Overwatch Two. Huh. So, yeah, Just I'm not. Fun. I don't really have an opinion because I've been so disconnected from Overwatch for mm-hmm. well over a year, maybe two years now. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Because when it when I, I bought Overwatch when it first came out, like when it was like still rolling mm-hmm. out i bought overwatch and i was super into it and i was like excited for it and i was playing it constantly and then it just died for me because i think the culture of it just like most competitive uh games online get very toxic you know oh dude. nobody nobody knows how to be a team anymore Wait, everybody was- everybody's blaming everyone mm-hmm. else for their loss or I whatever can't it i can't even play as who yeah. i want to play at i was playing the pc version for like two weeks just binge playing it and um no one for the love of god will change to a class like there's there's warnings if you're if your if your team composition is unbalanced will be like hey you probably need a tank or you need a healer no one is ever willing to swap so I'm like fuck it i guess it's got to be me so I'm mm-hmm. just playing healer or tank all day. I'm just like, I would like to play damage at some point. Well, cause but- that that's because some people some people some people are are literally such tryhards. They take the game way too seriously and they're like, no, I'm always a, a DPS or or or, a, or a, I'm always a I'm always a tank or I'm always this or I'm always that. No one's gonna tell me otherwise, and you're just gonna have to change. And it's Hello, just like it's as a mercy main, I run on spite. <laughs> It's just like it's literally just like a juvenile way of doing it. It's like if you really want to play a game and have fun, why are you being a juvenile teenager where you're not open to change, where you're not open to Mm -hmm. uh, what's the word I'm looking for, where you're not open to uh, compromise, you know? I feel like that's just like the inherent beauty of Overwatch, too, is like that's what separates it from just like any kind of regular running gun shooter, just like you have to adapt to the situation, like whether it's adapting to like enemies using different compositions or you having to change your play style and character. I feel like that's the entire appeal of the game and people just like, nah, let me just play as McCree and, uh, and bash. And we just play as a turret, not move. Yep. Yeah, again, yeah. As a main, yeah. If you play yeah. Bastion, I'm, I'm just gonna you. say this one thing: if you play Bastion main, you're a monster. As a Lucio main, I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> As someone, yeah, I like it was like 200 hours in Lucio, and then it was like 80 hours in Mercy, and then it was like 10 in Reaper, something like I, that. <laughs> 100 hours in Mercy, man. I live on spite. I live going. I'm a healer. But <laughs> I think every character is reasonably well balanced in there, with the exception of fucking Bastion. Like he was like crazy overpowered in that original beta that came mm-hmm. out a little bit before. They gave the him game. a shield, but he's think- still too. His damage output is insane. It's. It's I think so personally, ridiculous. I think personally, I'm coming off a little salty because I come from originally playing League of Legends, which is a very toxic community, and uh, it. it, it Ultimately, I fe- I felt like Overwatch turned into that I- in a way because a lot of League of Legends ple- people who were just not climbing the ladder in the rankings who were stuck in ELO hell in League of Legends, they hopped over to Overwatch because, hey, maybe my luck will be better here, you know? So to, to be fair to Overwatch, um, at least on the PC version, Blizzard does a much better job than other uh, contemporaries in terms of like filtering their chats. And I don't believe even um, voice communications on by default unless you're in ranked. Um, right. But I feel like they do at least do a better job of like fostering their community than like something like League. That's fair. 
Um, I guess going back to the hero progression, I'm kind of interested to see how that works out in PvP. I don't think um, it's going to, because that would be too, like... Yeah, that'd be too many variables. Like, there's already way too many existing variables in Overwatch as is, and tossing that onto it. Like, like when you see a Roadhog silhouette, you're like, okay, here's exactly what I need to do. Here's what his capabilities are. I don't think you necessarily need... Uh, 10 more variables thrown in there as to guess as to what they're capable of. Yeah. Um, Only different grooves. Let's see. Is there anything we kind of missed on BlizzCon, Sarah? Um, I mean, other than the fact that they had like the Blizzard Arcade Collection released day, day of, which has like three of Blizzard's original titles in it. It's $20 unless you're like me, a giant sucker and buy the $30 or more Blizzard an- 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 anniversary pack which includes like in-game items for like Overwatch, WoW you actually get it free then so I so I got it free, I actually have it downloading right, right now um I mean, other than like other than Diablo 2 obviously being the biggest announcement of the show and the technical alpha starting within the next couple of months not really, I mean I what I will say on um, Activision being a shitty company and everything that Blizzard's done aside, I think Blizzard did a very great job at capturing what makes BlizzCon such like a fan event and just being there for the fans and making something that the fans had a great time watching. Like it made people so nostalgic that there were people on Twitter who live in the Anaheim area where BlizzCon normally is. It takes place at the Anaheim convention center. So like a hop, skip and a jump away from like Disney. There were people who were Uber eating and door and door dashing drinks from the Anaheim hotel bar (laughs) (laughs) because they miss BlizzCon so much. And they were taking screenshots of drinks that like they were like door dashing from the bar because they were like, because it's like BlizzCon is a fan event. Like it's meant for Blizzard fans. Like E3 is meant for all types of games. Nah, man, Battle.net's just for Blizzard people. People. All you hear about at, at BlizzCon is World of Warcraft, Diablo, StarCraft, Hearthstone, and Overwatch, and that's it. There's no Activision games. There's nothing. It's just for Blizzard fans. So I will give Blizzard StarCraft is a name I have not heard for a long time. <laughs> oh, the age. Um, I'll give Blizzard credit where credit is due. They made an event that was a lot of fun to watch. The opening ceremony rocked. Uh, it showed us what people wanted to see. Metallica was there for some weird reason, and then Twitch muted them from their own music and put weird, like, the dubstep in it instead. That was a weird time. I don't really understand that, so I'm not going to talk about that because it's weird. Um, But, like, it was just, it was a nice opening ceremony. It was a nice event. It felt weird watching it and not hearing people yell, like, for the Alliance or for the Horde when they would do that whole, like, yearly, all right, Alliance players rise up and everyone, like, screams. Like, it was weird not to see that, but it still felt good to be like, oh, I'm a Blizzard fan. I'm a World of Warcraft player. I'm a... I'm a Diablo player. It's cool to see what I like and what I represent and what and what I wear, what I've tattooed on me, shown in such a cool way and reminded that this event is for us. We put so much time, effort, sweat, blood, and money into these games. So it very nice job, Blizzard. I had fun watching. I had a fun time. Thank That's you it. for coming to your TED Talk. Yeah, now, welcome to my TED Talk, where I will explain why anyone's going to become the Lich King. Oh, God, where am I going? Oh, no. Uh, All right, go talk about other boring stuff. Mm, 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 (laughs) Mesa, you're you're my go-to tech guy, right? Yeah. How do you feel about Xbox, and how do you feel about frames per second? Um, They're pretty good at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. X- Xbox has begun to roll out its new FPS boost feature, which is set to allow, as the name implies, uh, higher frame rates for older generation titles from the Xbox One generation backwards. Uh, currently, it's only just the Xbox One generation, not necessarily 360 and OG. Mm. Uh, kind of weird. We even have to call it OG Xbox instead of the Xbox One, but whole naming convention aside. Uh, the first five games available for the new feature are Watch Dogs 2, New Super Lucky's Tale, Sniper Elite 4, UFC 4, and Far Cry 4. A lot of 4s in there. 
Uh, these higher frame rates aren't achieved by individual developers pushing out new updates to take advantage of the Series X and S's more powerful hardware, but by platform-wide software provided purely from Microsoft's end. So in the case of Sniper Elite 4, the frame rate is doubled from 30 to 60. And uh, Super Super Lucky's tail has increased from 30 to 120. Uh, Jason Ronald, program management director, has noted that the feature is, in, is entirely optional can, and can be toggled off by players if they want to opt out, just in case, for whatever reason, they want the lower frame rates. Um, but I think like my general thought on this is that this is completely revolutionary, and it's going to bring that entire generation of games on uh, Xbox One, not not necessarily graphically like textures or anything like that, but it's going to bring it so much closer as to what uh, people's expectations are nowadays. Mm-hmm. And in comparison, Sony not doing backwards compatibility whatsoever uh, prior to the PS4. Uh, this just leaves them in the dust even further. Just like not only do we have backwards compatibility in the first place, but now it's going to be reasonably on par with what we can expect nowadays from contemporary frame rates Mm -hmm. so i i think this is and the fact that developers don't have to put any effort into this this is entirely done by xbox and so they're going to be like um they're going to be going through more games on somewhat of a regular basis um they're they're kind of doing it individually it's not going to be like a big wide thing just like here all the games now have this but Mm. it's I think this is fucking revolutionary if your only means of going back to seventh generation titles. Um, if the Xbox is your only solution, it's a hell of a free thing you're getting. Play play uh, Alan Wake at uh, 120 FPS when Please. it comes out. Please. So, uh, <laughs> Tech Wizard Mesa, what are your thoughts? I um, mean... I mean, well, first things, it makes a lot more sense for this to be from th- uh, Xbox One than uh, 360 and such, because that, because the Xbox Series X, you know, Xbox One and Xbox Series is basically computers. You're basically just telling it to use extra power. There isn't that layer of emulation that you have to worry about going back to the 360 and the original Xbox. Um,. Uh, this, yeah, I mean, this is just a, this is just, I mean, it's a great update. Um, I'm sure the, uh, the optional I'm assuming is that it's probably a bit more, um, uh, volatile than, um, than on paper it might sound. I'm sure like there might be some, some running issues that, you know, just putting it back to 30 will fix. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is really exciting and I really, really hope this puts more initiative behind Sony upping their backwards compatibility because, um, because right now it's it's not existing outside of like PS now streaming, which mm -hmm. is less than optimal for most people. And it sucks because like that 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 PS2 emulator that they have that they're using is fantastic and could easily just be opened up to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, same, uh, I think they also have. A, I'm sure that there's a PS1 emulator that's of, of the same caliber. And I know PS3 is difficult. You know, we the the the, the modding community has just gotten uh, PS3 emulation going, so. Um, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that that's going to be a lot more difficult um, at some but, level. Uh, like, I, I know this is going to be an incredibly simplified uh, line of thought. Wouldn't it be easier instead of like trying to get the PS3 version of game working on PS4, or PS5? Couldn't they just take a 360 version and kind of strip out the Xbox end of things and just replace like the, um, uh, like like button prompts with just uh, PlayStation ones. That that's probably I very mean, oversimplistic, but it seems like an easier solution than trying to um kind of rewire the PS3 version with with how it's relying on the cell um architecture. That processor. I just that just seems like such an extra a lot of extra work for nothing, honestly. Um, they, like they would really want to stay. I mean, and, like they would want to have something that's replicatable, so that they can put um, the different Uncharted's, that they can put um, the Sly Coopers, they can put all of those through that method, and you know, get the product at the end. We can just build a time machine and stop them from ever doing the cell processor. That might be easier. Oh, that might actually be easier. <laughs> 
Yeah, stop that. Stop that. Um, stop that. Uh, uh, Air Force supercomputer from happening. <laughs> Sarah, you're uh, the only one here with a Series X. Is this yes. uh, good news to you? Um, I mean, so I haven't really played anything backwards compatible on my Series X yet. Uh, long story, but at my job, I can play video games when there's no one in the store. So I've been playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 on the Series X. And I would say the load times are literally non-existent. Like, I literally go from being in the gummy ship to going into a world and maybe takes, like, 0.5 seconds. It's incredibly fast. It's crazy how fast it is. Um, I mean, I will be skidding more Xbox 360 games in the near future because I'd mind to, like, replay some of my old, like, favorites. So, hey, guys, if you can get Shadows of the Damned running at 120 FPS, I'll be very thankful. It's just for me and me and me alone. No one else. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think they're willing to put Where's, in that time. Mesa, don't ruin my <laughs> dreams, damn it. I want to play Shadows of the Damned at 120 FPS. <laughs> I, I want to see gonna, demons that look like penises. It's going to have to stay a dream. FPS. In the uh, chat, uh, the mysterious doc says, PlayStation 3, it only does everything except, except emulate. emulate. <laughs> I mean, like, I really wish Sony would start doing this. I have a bunch of PlayStation 3 games at home I would love to play again. And yeah. his Infamous PlayStation is incredibly dumb. <laughs> Infamous, Resistance, we can maybe forget kills, and I've kind of soured on it. I went back to play. It doesn't really hold. Okay, me. but if but if Insomniac keeps fucking hinting at another Resistance or like a PlayStation 5 port of all the older games, I would be very pleased they, they won't playing. stop. With they my emotions. Posting, cut, they keep post screenshots on Facebook. Just They're stringing me along and game. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, give me weird aliens in like World War One. I. I don't even remember the name of the aliens. They were the Chimera or something like that. They were yes. just like weird hunched over like lizard men. Like I want more resistance or else I want like a... Why are there not more guns? For those that don't know, the bullseye at the... Uh, the chimera yes! rifle you can oh, tag you can tag so cool. an enemy with like with the darts and so that makes all your shots lock onto them so you can just like hide behind cover and just shoot up in the sky all those bullets are just going to automatically trace to the enemy as that one was as so cool i mean like i kind of got that feeling with some of the tech guns in a uh, cyberpunk to where once i hit an enemy once i would just hide behind cover and just keep firing until i heard the like death sounds but like nothing can replace the bullseye man the, those those games were so much fun and really good and people are just now realizing how good they were people are going back and playing them and they're like fuck these games were really good Corey, you're not an xbox guy and you have a decently powered pc and so like as we covered all uh xbox exclusives are you gonna be coming to pc and there's game pass obviously does this ever so slightly nudge you towards possibly grabbing one um I mean, not really an Xbox. I so <laughs> it's funny uh, that you bring this up because my roommate who got an Xbox Series X uh, is letting me use it for when I want to play Xbox games on Game Pass for stream. So that way, my my computer isn't taking the bulk of the game while also having to push it out onto the internet. So that way, my computer can just focus on the stream, and my and the Xbox can focus on the game. Um, and so essentially the Xbox series X that he has is right behind my computer right now. So I've been, I've been utilizing it and, uh, he's like, yeah, I mean, it it might as well get some use since I'm working so much and I don't, I don't really have much time to play it. So I would say we were talking about this on the pre-show. I don't need a fucking series X, but I'm tempted to get it because of this slash the instant resume, which lets you, uh, suspend like up, I believe it's like up to five games at the same time, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty, pretty freaking cool. I but can, all, I can I, I wanna, confirm that it's nuts. <laughs> all I want to say before we move on, uh, with this, you can play Gears of Wars one, two, and three at a frame rate that is that isn't in the twenties. So that's, yeah, that's pretty dope. I want to see Gears two running at sixty FPS. Please. Gears two is still so freaking good. Yeah, I really. <laughs> uh, although I am, I am very uh, a giant worm. I am very excited to now that I have utilization of the Xbox Series X. I am very excited to play the sequel to um, uh, freaking what's that game called? Um, 
Senua's Sacrifice. Yeah. Mm, yeah. One of the only reasons I bought a Series X because of the yeah. rumor that that, that was going to be a Series X exclusive. Uh huh. And I was like, ah, fine. <laughs> I was, I was like, God <laughs> damn it, Microsoft. But like, a part of me kind of makes me pissed though, because why would you make a game that's so in in instrumental in showing how m- mental health works for people who don't deal w- with it? Stick it on a rectangle that not many people are going to have because it's impossible to get and really expensive. Yeah. I don't know, but that's but yeah, that's uh, Hell Hellblade and whatever the fuck the next Gears of War game is. The only reason I bought a Series X. So. Corey, have I told you about my new exercise habit of, of going jogging? Oh god! About how I go to this uh, local hill that's near that's near me, uh-uh. and I like it oh, particularly no. because it's silent. <laughs> Um, and we're moving, and that's a segue. <laughs> that's a segue. <laughs> yes, it can is. I, can I do one of my patented look into the camera and speak to people things really, really fast? No. Yes. Looper team, don't fucking make Silent Hill. You Wait, know what? why? Why do you think uh, that? Wait, real, real quick, I, I want uh, to address this. Because handle as... mental health in, uh, in the medium, and Silent Hill is all about dealing with your mental trauma. As the and big like, boss oh, of the world. Silent Hill Two, is, to be fair, I think you. Well, under, uh, I, I think you. I think you. Homecoming, Sound Hill Sarah, one real, real quick, Sarah. Sarah. Real quick, real yes. quick, real quick. As, okay. as the big boss of the Game Session Podcast, that as my official name in the Discord that I gave myself. Lies, I am right beneath you. <laughs> um, I have ever. Right. Okay, okay. I am um, the one. Like, like, the current plan is for everyone. On the, on the show to play through the medium at some point so that we can have a spoiler discussion so we can have a little game club if anyone else wants to join in on that that'd be cool um, it's like a we, book we, club we, but with we, games yes oh. <laughs> we we did do oh, um, okay. <laughs> Mesa. <laughs> we did do some coverage I believe Mesa, it was I love you you're like oh yeah. wait a minute we, we did do coverage, I want to say, two weeks ago on the Medium and like on some of the uh, content warning stuff <coughs> and, and how it handles some issues. That being said, no one on this... Sh- or Corey, maybe you... Have you beat it real quick? Yes. Okay. Corey's so beat aside it. From, I'm so like aside from Cor- through it. Yeah. So aside from Corey, no one else is beating it. Sarah's played some. I am hesitant to give judgment on how it handles issues without playing it first, and I am dedicated to play it. I'll be trying to do that this week. Um, I, so I, I touched it for five minutes to see how DLSS worked. It worked well. Nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, we will be trying to chug through that whenever anyone can individually do that. Um, but until then, I, I will personally withhold judgments on. Well, the I will not. Issues. Don't fucking make a Silent Hill game because you're just going to copy shit from other games anyway, like you did with this one. I mean, right, that's, I'm, what, I'm that's what Silent maybe, Hill is maybe. now. More Silent Hill games have been that than not. I know. <laughs> I, I was going to say, Sarah, you, you, I think you miss, uh, you, you, what's it called? You, um, you underestimate Konami's ability to undermine Konami. their own titles. And, anyway, oh, we, I don't. We, I don't. <laughs> okay, I, I say want, we're going to get want, into the. You want a pachinko <laughs> machine to show up at your door, Corey? I, I say we're going to get into the Bloober team stuff later and uh, uh, the medium later, but it is involved in the story. So let, let me just go through the story. Uh, Bloober team, the studio behind the recently released The Medium, has teased that they're working on an existing survival horror IP from a famous publisher for over a year. Uh, popular fan speculation points to the rumored IP being Konami's Silent Hill franchise, uh, which is a side note, hasn't seen a mainline title since 2012 Silent Hill Downpour. <laughs> And um, so the reason like fans are speculating that blue routines behind this is due to the medium is due to the medium. Um, what did I write here? It's been widely praised across the board and in some cases criticized um, for taking an aesthetic and narrative notes from silent Hill to the point of some people calling it pastiche. I know Sarah and some of uh, my friends on a discord have said like, yes, this is like directly ripping off, but I haven't played it. I'm hesitant to give judgment one way or the other on that. It is. It's directly but, ripping it off. But it's, um, it's also maybe, gone down to utilizing series composer Akira Yamaoka. Maybe it was Bloober team's application to Konami saying I like, fully believe hey, that the medium I that, that they approach Konami 
with a playable demo that was something Silent Hill r- related. Konami at the time said no. They said, oh, fuck, we have this playable, like, hour-long demo. We have to do something with this. And that's how the medium happened. I'm probably and, well, under you, this belief. I, yeah, that's, I, most, that's, I think that's very believable. I think that's speculation, but let me just go ahead and finish the story. Uh, in addition to this, uh, Video Games Chronicles revealed that Konami has outsourced yet another Silent Hill project to a, uh, quote, prominent Japanese developer with a reveal due this summer uh, that is set to be an alternative take on the series. And sources familiar with Konami's plans for the franchise noted that the publisher had already pitched Until Dawn developer Supermassive on a oh, whole series so reboot cool. in, the, in the style of its episodic Dark Pictures releases, Man of Madon and Little Hope. That would have um, been so, so fucking cool. <laughs> so just to backtrack for a minute, because um, I, I do re-listen to all the podcast episodes we do just to like, notice any audio mistakes or ha- basically how to improve. And uh, re-listening to that podcast, I do recall... Um, some of the criticisms levied towards the medium for being like a straight up rip off or pastiche. Um, I don't think necessarily having like a second spiritual w- world necessarily necessitates copying or it's rip-off. not that though. And you haven't played it. So I'm going to give you a pass on this. Oh, no, no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give judgment one way or the other until like it's not just the I fact that it. there's like a spiritual world because that's been in every science fiction Supernatural, mm-hmm. like yeah, it has to do. It has, it has to do with a lot of the. Well, it has hold on, to do hold with on, a lot of the on. aesthetics. M- Meso, what were you gonna say? I, I just made a joke. Actually, Should it be ripping off a link to the past? Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's 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 more of the aesthetic that it follows. The creature <clears throat> designs, the the whole idea of having like a character that's like dealing with their own m- mental trauma. And just it just a lot of it seems very Silent Hillish, even from the stupid fixed camera angles, which I hate with a deep rooted passion. Terrible opinion. I hate the fixed camera angles. It's minus the, fixed camera uh, angles minus the weapons. Them. Yeah, minus the ability minus the to actually have weapons. Because okay. all you do is run. You hold your breath. You sneak in your breath. Before run. <laughs> we move in with a new story, um, Corey, since you're the one that's finished it and Sarah's played it and me and Mesa, well, Mesa checked out the DLSS. I'm not sure if that counts as playing. Um, <laughs> do you two maybe want to contrast some of your opinions real quick before we delve into the actual yeah. uh, what do you mean side contrast? of this? Hold on. Hold on. I'm confused. What What does this mean? What are Cor- we doing? Corey, what are we doing? I, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> it, 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 it would seem at least from uh, <laughs> what are we doing? it would seem at least from the earlier uh, discussion on this uh, Corey and Sarah seem to have some differing opinions on some of the, I, I guess, the quality of the game slash um, how it takes pastiche or influence from from Silent Hill. You seem to have some so, interesting opinions. So, so then let me answer this question then. Um, so then basically how I feel about the game, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but that as a homage to Silent Hill it is a Sorry, did you just say homage? Homage. <laughs> yes, homage. Exactly. A <laughs> or ama a homage, right? It's the it's homage. actually no, 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 you gotta you gotta do you gotta do it with the hands. Yes, the flourish. Um <laughs> as as sort of a as sort of like a example of and this is the, like the medium to me, if I have to put it into one sentence, it's like a major Silent Hill fan made a sort of uh, spiritual successor to Silent Hill, but it fell short in a few ways. Um, I can kind of agree with that. My one sentence thing really quick would be that, but with the little like apostrophe, I think mm-hmm. that's an apostrophe that says, but also played nothing but Silent Hill before making this. And right, they were like, exactly. oh shit, what should this enemy look like? Uh, what's the nearest movie on my shelf? 2006 is Keanu Reeves is Constantine. It's That's like it. <laughs> it's like I want to make. It's like the person was like, I want to make a Silent Hill game, but obviously copyright laws stop me from doing that. So what can I do? But, well, it's also you know. like someone got literally seven hours into making a, a game, and they were twenty, and they were eighty percent done with it, and then they went, "Oh wait, copyright law exists." <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Oh wait a minute." I can't call this building Silent Hill Hotel. I can't so, say that we're in so Silent Hill. So I, I honestly, rating wise, I give it probably a solid seven point five, maybe a seven. 
out of 10. Okay. Um, I'm at, it's, like, it's, a, it's an okay game, but I really agree with Sarah in, in, in stating that it's, it's very mediocre. It is yeah, very it mediocre. Just, everything feels mediocre. Yeah. So you wouldn't like, necessarily rate it low or high. You'd say it's about the medium. It's it's a good attempt. <laughs> it's a, it is a good attempt. And I see what they were trying to do, but it was poorly executed and poorly handled with a lot of. I don't themes. know why this released on the Series X. I'm just going to say it. It does, does not look like a Series X game. Well, yes, the because cool Xbox have, have the world going at the same time is interesting. A- Xbox needed <laughs> a bigger catalog of games. So yeah, like it's fine. It doesn't look pretty. The faces look just kind of honestly. What the fuck is that dude's name that I was talking to you about? Thomas. Thomas looks like Thomas is the best looking character in that game, model okay. wise. Can I just say real quick? Yes, that please speak. I told you this, Sarah. You know what I'm going to say. If they made the entire game about Thomas, it would be so much more interesting. It would be so much more interesting. <laughs> so much they more interesting. This fucker, like halfway through the game. Uh, okay, and, let's. Uh, and then let's it just makes it. you look at the chicks. Mm. Spoilers. Like, spoilers. Yeah. yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Let, let, okay. Yeah. Like, All right. Like, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go any deeper than. That he's like introduced halfway through the game. Then you look at the chick you're playing as, and you're like, "Wow, you're a wet blanket compared to Thomas." <laughs> <laughs> You're so boring. Like he's so cool. Yeah. All right. right. So let's go ahead and save uh, the rest of that for the um, official medium discussion. Whatever. Please let Supergiant make a Silent Hill game. But the only thing that would fear me. The only thing that would fear me. Let let me go into that a little bit, actually. Um, So that was on Konami's (laughs) end. Uh, Konami kind of shifted ideas around. Yes, they they have. It's at different levels of the company. The people at the lower end were looking for studios. They went to them. Uh, so they did their thing with Supermassive. Higher up said they didn't want to use Supermassive. See, because my my oh. only fear with Supermassive doing it is they would make it Until Dawn style, which would be throw six teenagers into Silent Hill and like all of them have maybe murdered somebody. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but they all, they all make them have like a depressing as fuck I, it's like, I really only care about one person I have absolute faith in Supermassive as long as they don't do the same plot twist two times in a row <laughs> <laughs> they just yeah, do it true. in Silent Hill they're like wait it's the same plot twist but in Silent Hill <laughs> um, honestly and I, 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 I really don't have much faith I don't have any faith in Konami these days because they just they just really like to shoot themselves in the foot because they're a bunch of freaking old ass, uh, you know, business execs who don't know what the hell a video game even is. So, okay, the interesting part of the story to me. So we it's very strongly hinted one of the uh, uh, Western developers for this is Bloober Team, and then they also went to uh, Supermassive. Uh, what is everyone speculating on for the prominent Japanese developer that's with the, with the reveal being set for the summer? It, any guesses as to who that might be? I think the oh, most hilarious one. thing that they could do is just let Super Capcom 51. fucking make it. <laughs> See, let Resident Evil make yes. Silent Hill. <laughs> if they just literally, if <clears throat> okay, if literally konami would just suck down their freaking pride and stop being little fucking idiots I, i'm trying to be non as non-offensive as possible um <laughs> if they stop the, the non swaying stream is idiots, yours you're more than welcome to sway here Corey. i'm just saying fucking give the ip to capcom because clearly with resident evil they know what the fuck they're doing so that's all <laughs> um i am gonna throw out a crazy fucking option here but uh blaine this is for you don't know if you're gonna like agree with with me but mm-hmm. give it to suda 51 let suda 51 make a make a silent hill game give he it to yoko, exactly t- done, huh? give it to yoko taro he he like oh my god he like like suda hasn't really done a horror game you can argue that shadows of the damned has horror elements in it which it does but it like, has big I can imagine in it. the gun is called Johnson. <laughs> I have a good one. But like, I, a- but like, I honest to God think that Suda 51 can kick a lot of ass doing a Silent Hill game. And he's worked with the Kira Yamaoka before. He has worked with, um, oh, it was a Resident Evil dude. 
uh, Shadows Shadows of the Dam's other director or its producer was like more at like an old Resident Evil dude. Like he has worked with these people in the past. Let Suda make an honest to god horror game. Let him make a Silent Hill game. It'll be so weird and out there that. Also, fucking uh, Akira Yamioka has gone on record saying that he's working on something that fans will be very excited about. He said this like a month ago. Like he's like, I'm currently to be working fair, on something everyone that fans likes are very everything he puts about. out. Well, also, like it's either, also, what it's if, either uh, Shadows Shadows of the Damn Two or it's fucking Silent Hill, and I hate to say it's not the first one, but I'm going with the second one. Can you? So first of all, we've okay. I want to I want to rewind us a little bit. Because earlier Jose had said that it's going to be sort of a uh, revisionary of the of the Silent Hill series. We, if you guys recall, we've had a revisionary of the Silent Hill series, which was Shattered Memories, and we all know how that turned out. We all know how that turned out. Yeah, it was okay. It was it was okay. The enemies were very singular. It was like a single enemy. It was like it no. Had, oh, it had that's, an interesting not, to it. that's not what the game was about. Yeah, that's, I know, not, I know. that's not what the game was about. It was reading your mind, Corey. It I made know, what you were scared of. Anyways, I did play it. It's fine. But imagine for a moment, if you will, with me. What if this is insane? But what if they gave Silent Hill to From Software and that make it a work. Bloodborne style? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just keep dying. You have to keep reset. So you get it right. I'm like ready to take down Pyramid Head. Like I'm here for the old blood. You know, I, I can just... see that working. They have, they can nail the aesthetic. I don't know why that, that sent me down. Because like, yeah, like you're fighting enemies, you get reset, whatever. You have to keep doing it until you do it right. But for some reason, that got me on the train of thought. What if they just make a Groundhog's Day game where you're playing as Bill Murray, but it's like a Souls game? No. <laughs> <laughs> the final boss is the Groundhog. <laughs> And it's like um, big buff and has like five arms. I, and it, I, it has a choral sound behind it. Like, oh. I have some suggestions that I think would be pretty good fits. Uh, one, specifically for the director, uh, Shinji Mikami, the original director yeah, for the original the Silent Hill. Who worked on Sh- Damn, Res- thank you. Resident Evil 4 and then um, The Evil Within. Uh, he only worked on the first. Or no, he, he was involved with Evil Within 2. And I think Evil Within 2 is the better game. So I, I don't remember the name of the director on that, but that person also. He was the um, producer on it, I think. I would like, honestly... I, I, Kojima's obviously a no-go. There, there's too much bad blood there. <laughs> um, well, I unless would, all these rumors are are true, and that and that there's, Sony... Supposedly, Sony approached him and was like, hey, look, we got these rights from Konami. Would you like to do the thing again? And knowing Kojima's Konami, like, mm, I would I imagine... Know. I would imagine there's a very specific like fuck Kojima clause in any contract Konami has nowadays. But then there's well, I mean, also the conspiracy theory that the fight between Konami and Hideo, K- Hideo Kojima never actually happened. Fake. Oh, don't even get me started on he that. He has been know. known to do shit like this. This is pretty no. heavily. This is no. pretty. This is very heavily substantiated. Yeah. An entire soundtrack, even like I, I think, it, I think the Konami execs are a little fair. Be like, oh come on, bro. <laughs> like, come on, man. I, I, it's pretty. Yeah, I pretty don't, heavily substantiated. I don't think so, Corey. Well, I love you all your check. I didn't actually like, expect you to use it. One person yeah, I would like love. They're like, oh god, he's spending so much money. <laughs> one person I would love to see direct this, and no way in hell is probably going to happen. Uh, D- uh, Don Salvato, the guy behind Doki the Doki, 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 Doki Man. I, I think he could pull off some really fucking weird okay, shit. Okay, but um, like, if he if he was the one doing it, you are going to have to dig into the files of the game to find like QR codes to lead you to the next area. And then have like MP3. Does does no one remember this? Am I the only one that like Doki Doki had like hidden files in in the game's code? It wasn't mm. too extensive to like that uh, degree. It was pretty extensive. It was I, like hidden towards the mm. sequel. That he, that he's like, oh, that sequel's not not real, even though it was like legitimate like sequel fodder. I'd have to look at um, it. I don't recall QR code. In terms, in terms of studios, I forget the name of the studio, but it. it um, um, it's made of a bunch of ex Japan studio people who left Sony because of their heavy Western focus, right? Recently, 
Um, is it I think, the new I think, studio that just formed? There was I, a new I, Japanese studio that just I, formed. I honestly do not remember the name whatsoever. Like my friend told it to me, I just I just completely lost it. But I think I think Japan Studio, like the talent behind Japan Studio, could do really well with Silent Hill. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, he found it. It's mm-hmm. it's. Oh, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of this. It's B- Boca B- Boca Game Studios, which is Kachiro. Keichiro Toriyama um Mm -hmm. he's like he's like a really big horror developer he just created a brand new studio and they're working on a game that's set to launch in sometime in 2023 um and that it's a horror project and they just released concept art for it that looks really silent hilly like the concept art looks incredibly silent Mm -hmm. hill like um Mm -hmm. here Yes, it's literally yep. held by the Silent Hill creator. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He created Silent Hill, and yeah. he made a brand new studio. And the concept art looks incredibly Silent Hillish. For what it's worth, I don't, I don't know the name of the uh, studio. I'm gonna uh, a, lot, a lot of the old uh, the Silent Hill like games. Bulka Game Studio. Yes, that is. Yes, that yeah, this, it. Is it. Yeah. this is it. Yeah, this is, is this is who I pick. This is who I pick. Is this the studio that made the uh, Siren games? No, uh, this is blenders. brand new. Oh, they siren. just formed. They just no, 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 no. a couple months ago. Yeah, but it's made from people who are from uh, okay. Japan Studio. Japan, uh, Japan Studio, who made Siren. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because Siren is pretty fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like this is being helmed by the guy that created Silent Hill, and so I just posted the link in the Twitch chat of the concept art. Why? How is this not a Silent Hill game? <laughs> like, it's it's terrifying. It looks just like a Silent a Silent Hill game. And they've even said, like, he said, "quote I'm coming back to my roots." For example, towards horror. However, rather than something deeply rooted into horror, I want to keep an entertainment note while keeping elements from horror. I want players to feel like ex- exhilarated while playing. Like, if this isn't Silent Hill, I would be baffled. Like. Dude. These creatures like are weird. horrifying looking. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> they're so horrifying. That's my pick. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 pointing, I'm pointing before the, the home run. I, I literally I, I would this would be pretty if they could just make a silent hill game that would literally make me shit my pants. Well that I was what Kojima was they, doing with PT. He literally said he wanted people to shit themselves up like Yeah. They should just so. straight up make Evil Within Three just Silent Hill. Make that be the subtitle. <laughs> I would be down for that. Uh let's see. Let, let's get through are this. Are you familiar with the um the, the uh with the um PT was a calling card for Kojima Studios thing? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> I one hundred percent believe it. Let, we're let's going, go we're through, going down the PC rabbit hole again, guys. Here we go. Let's, <laughs> let's go through some of the Nintendo news real quick, and then we'll just get to um, what everyone's been playing. And if if I miss, mm-hmm. so we're going to kind of like skim through this for some of the bigger stuff. If, if I miss anything, feel free to call it out. Um, so Splatoon Three is launching in 2022. It's set in a new desert environment. Uh, Skyward mm-hmm. Sword HD is coming to Switch on July 16th with. Uh, with the option for non-motion controls and a new pair of Zelda-themed Joy-Cons. And I put in parentheses here, no Wind Waker. What the f***? Um, Where is Twilight Princess? Fuck Twilight Princess. Uh, Mario Gold Super Rush coming uh, June 25th. Uh, Fall Guys is coming to Switch in the summer. Uh, Pura and... Can I just... can Can I say one thing about the Nintendo thing? Yeah, go ahead. So... I, 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 I think I blame myself for having very high expectations. Um, but you were it also, very disappointed. I was very disappointed because like it's been well over, it had been well over 500 days since Nintendo actually had a full direct. And, um, then I was sitting there watching it live and, you know, and there's nothing wrong with this. Like, I get it. We, as America, we're pretty privileged to have, like, a lot of video game companies pander to the Western market. But, like, Nintendo was the, that, the pretty much 90% of that Nintendo Direct, I feel, was pandering to sort of the, um, like, 
anime style JRPG kind of video game characters and video games in general. Um, and, and, or also like dating Sims and all that thing, which Sarah, I know you love your dating Sims. Um, but we uh, have for that baby, it's coming it's in July. Like, there was literally nothing there for me. And I, I mean, maybe Splatoon three, that seems fun, but like, I I was not a big fan of Skyward Sword. I played it all the way through, and it I wanted either Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, and they gave I, us neither of those. I think so. motion yeah, controls are the least of Skyward Sword's issues. I just don't think it's a very well built game all around. Like mm. I can live without Twilight Princess. I want Wind Waker so fucking bad. Wind Waker is so also. Good. I swear to God, if they put another Fire Emblem or Xenoblade Chronicles character, yeah, in I'm gonna Smash, lose my I'm shit. Gonna Freaking lose my mind. But Corey, wait, 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 wait,
Mason wanted to say something. Actually, let me just get through this real quick, then I'll go just so we have all the details for everyone. Uh, Fall Guys coming to Switch, uh, Pyra and Mithra from Xenoblade Chronicles, are coming to Smash Ultimates, Hyrule's Age of Calamity is getting an expansion pass with the first piece of content launching in June and the other in November. Mm-hmm. Outer Wilds is coming in the summer. Uh, Famicom Detective Club's coming May 14th. Uh, these are two games on the original Famicom that are being completely remade from the ground up with a visual novel style. No More Heroes 3 is launching exclusively on the Switch in August. Monster Hunter Rise coming March 26th. And Project Triangle Strategy, which is the same team behind... Tw- uh, not 2019. Uh, same team behind uh, Octopath Traveler, which looks pretty visually amazing. And a physical release of Hades is coming March 19th. Uh, Mesa, you wanted to say something? Oh, no, it's just I feel like for me personally, um, you know, I love Skyward Sword. Um, uh, um, you know, it's not my personal favorite, but I, st- I still I still adore that game. So, um, and, you know, I guess I, I, I was a little disappointed um, straight, right after the direct, but after giving some time and like actually looking at what they actually announced, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. this is a this was a typical direct. Um, this was uh, in fact, like the fact that they announced um, uh, Splatoon three actually makes it a, a, one of the better ones. Um, I, uh, as in, as in like fifty one of the you, you know what I'm sorry. I think people you also are. overestimate the rate at which Nintendo mm-hmm. first party games come out. They, it's also, not that you, often. Also, you also uh, forgot they, to mention Neon White, which was that awesome like first person card demon mm-hmm. battle simulator. That's that from the same cool. yeah, who did Pira. Donut County. The same dude who did Donut <laughs> County. That's his next game, and it looks like this cool, like anime style, like you're fighting demons in a heaven using a card based system. And it looks like the co- that was honestly the highlight of the direct for me, other than like the No More Heroes release date, because that looked so mm-hmm. fucking cool. Like it looked so different. And then like going on Twitter a few hours later and finding out the Donut County developers doing it. And I was like, holy shit, dude, talk, a, t- talk about a change from a cute raccoon making holes in the ground to fighting demons in hell with like a card based system. Let's see. Or if I any, even, uh, heaven. any closing thoughts on the Nintendo Direct before we shift over to what we've been playing? Um, yeah, you know, and also they did say that it was for the first half of the year. This is. <laughs> Even though they also have stuff here in August and stuff and whatnot. It's oh, yeah, but I mean, like, mainly focusing on the first half of the year. Mm-hmm. Which means they'll have one for the next half of the year. Is Twilight but, Princess not the sunshine of Zelda? No. I would, you know, honestly, honestly, me personally, as a human being, I say Zelda doesn't have a sunshine. But that's me. That is a bold <laughs> statement. Zelda doesn't have a sunshine. All of them are. I every single 3D Zelda game is better than Sunshine. D- 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 me, you can just yeah, I, that you quote quote that on put that quote on me I'm, happily. I'm happily take that, that. In your, I'm gonna put that in your obituary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, happily uh, play any of them. They're all great. Corey, I very desperately want to talk devour with you. Do you want to go ahead and lead that? Sure. Um, so, uh, a few last week, Monday, right? Monday, last week, Monday, um, me and, uh, King ish, as I call him on stream, um, and our friend inky blue, as well as Jose here all played a few rounds of devour, which if those of you that don't know is a brand new horror game that came out. Um, and it is a, uh, an early, horror game that still excuse me still has uh a lot of updates on the horizon and um and so it literally came out i think like the first week of february so it's really like less than a month old and we were it's also only five dollars it's also only five dollars so if anyone wants to play with me uh it's really fun and really spooky and really uh really something else um I I feel like it has the potential to be a a really fun um, horror game that lasts for a while uh, because it's so different. It's a competitive it's in a similar sense. It's like phasmophobia where it's very, it's very uh, cooperative. It's not competitive in any way. Um, And 
it literally has like an ongoing story. Uh, whereas phasmophobia is sort of like, okay, like you're ghost hunters, you're going to detect a ghost for in like a random house, blah, blah, blah. Once you do, you get out, you go. Whereas, also, whereas uh, Devourer also, has sorry, a, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, whereas Devourer with each stage that they reveal, which currently they only still have the first stage. Um, it has an ongoing story that continues after like, the, the first place you go to. So like the first place you go to is a house where you're a cult follower who is going to check in on the cult leader as to why a devil summoning ritual went wrong. And. Okay. Can I just pop in really fast? If uh-huh. you're a member of a cult and someone goes, Hey man, we need you to check up as a- on this devil summoning ritual to see if it fucked up. I'm gonna look this man straight in the eyes and go, "Now nah, fuck you, buddy." You know what? No, we had this. We <laughs> we had this conversation. Uh, I think it was Inky Blue said, "Corey, wouldn't you want to do this? It'd be something memorable to do." You're like, no. Why would I put myself in that situation? Be like, uh, you would have an interesting story if you survived. Exactly. If you die, whatever. It's cool. So, like, I get you're in a cult and that's your thing. I um, as as my favorite murder says, get the fuck out of the cult and call your dad. Like, no, <laughs> leave the cult. Like, no, if someone looks you in the eyes and go, listen, the demon summoning, you know, it might have fucked up. We need someone to go check out it. No, <laughs> but no, uh, you cool. don't do that. okay, I'm done. Go ahead. C- Corey made so, the uh, comparison to uh, phasmophobia, and so I, I played both with Corey. Um, uh, phasmophobia has a lot of unwritten rules you kind of have to read outside of the game in order to kind of learn how everything works um devour is is a much simpler premise it's very easy to get your head around it so the way it works is yeah, there is this creepy ghost lady in the house and Corey's very she's mean not a ghost. For ma- she's demon possessed demon possessed i stand corrected mm-hmm. um but she's wandering around the house, and Corey, you're very mean for making me want to go through the door first. <laughs> uh, Corey's like, hey, why don't you just walk through the for door? For anyone like, that wants I to see sh- that clip, it's on my Twitch. I clipped it. <laughs> so, go through the door. It was like, no. I, I, Corey, what are you doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you were experiencing for the first time, and you this, need to yeah. experience it all yourself without me spoiling it. But, so uh, I wanted to shove you through the door. <laughs> but the, the premise is there's this uh, possessed lady in the house and you have to sacrifice goats that you find throughout the house at an altar. But each time you do, it really, oh. really pisses this lady off. And so she's question. chasing around, knocking people down. <laughs> you have to so heal your teammates. Is there just it, goats in this house? Like, are they're, they're, little, this house? they're little baby goats, too. <laughs> Why is there so much smoke? Oh, I'm done. I'm just gonna mute myself again. I can't and fucking you, do this anymore. Continue. And they, you light them on fire, and it's real. It's real fucked up. Yeah, yeah. You got to sacrifice ten little baby goats with red eyes into in an altar, and once you do that, then you know you beat her. The game ends, and that's the end of that stage. It's very um, hard to win. <laughs> There's also, as a collectible, there are 25 roses to collect in the game. Um, somewhere all around the the premises and inside of the house. Um, very well hidden, by the way. Uh, there are some ridiculous places that I found roses. And um, it unlocks, I'm not going to say what it unlocks, but it unlocks a very special uh, item for your character. Um, and it's it's very fun. It's very fun. Um but yeah, basically you have to lure the goats with with little things of hay and they got to, you know, walk on over to them and then you can pick them up by the neck and shake them like a dog. Um, and, uh, and then uh, if you, get, you guys yeah. play, <laughs> it's fun. And then, and then um, if you do get caught by the by the demon possessed lady, she will scream in your face and then carry you to some part of the house where you are then crawling on the ground waiting for a team member to revive you with a med kit that's lying around the premises um yeah I, so I that's I, why so that's the first level the second level just got re- the second level didn't get released but they showed pictures of it and it's going to be um an asylum with a morgue oh no yeah is so there gonna be goats in the asylum too we don't like, we don't know we we don't know because the story is continuing from the original level um the- where <laughs> where they said that the the asylum level is going to be involving um 
because the 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 girl that actually goes the story is that Molly, the follower, the cult follower Molly, goes to check on the um the cult leader. And she actually, after she survives the events of what happened at the house, she actually ends up in an insane asylum and something obviously goes wrong at the asylum. And so you it's you're going there to investigate. I I would highly recommend this game to anyone that can stomach horror. It is a hell of a time with three other people. Um, I was shaking. We got we got strategic. So like shake, there's times like where she like once you get like nine baby goats murdered, she's oh, just she like insane. she's sprinting across the she house got like horns on her head. She's like I'm, I'm just running around shutting doors on Ish by accident. It's like sorry, buddy, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a good time, dude. The, so so me me and Ish and my my um or rather Inky Blue, me and Ish and Inky Blue all we beat it last night finally and. Uh, I was the one to put the last goat in the altar and uh, Inky Blue got grabbed by the girl as I ran past her. And like, it was, it was all, it was very, it was very uh, scary, very scary stuff. Anyways, um, (laughs) we can move on. (laughs) Uh, Mesa, what have have you been playing? All right. Uh, So this week has actually been really great for fighting games. Uh, in uh, at midnight tonight, uh, the new Street Fighter character is coming out, as well as the big balance update and a brand new mechanic that changes everything, and everything's going to be different. Oh, wow. um, uh, in, oh, fa- in fact, oh, right oh. now the season finale of last year's um like major Capcom events going on right now. Well, it just ended. Um, and I also been playing the beta for Guilty Gear Strive. Um. So I'm not really much of a Guilty Gear player, so I can't really say how different it is from other Guilty Gears, unfortunately. Um, however, one thing I can say that makes it very different from most other fighting games is the net code. The net code is fantastic. The one problem with fighting games is that they all usually have really terrible delay-based net code that makes playing online feel terrible. And you know, after a certain distance, it's basically unplayable. <laughs> With the, with the way rollback works, I was playing with games from people in Japan, and it felt perfect. It was phenomenal. Um, the, however, the lobby system was one of the worst things yeah. I've ever tried. In the in, and if, it, it's like it's like imagine if you had to like navigate like a really bad Neo Geo game before you could play someone, and then you can only play mm-hmm. one round. And then you're back in it. And then you're back into the really, really oh. bad Neo Geo game. It was, it's, it's one of the worst um, oh. lobbies I've ever seen in a fighting game. Um, I really hope in the future they add, um, they, they, they add just a menu, just a menu. A menu is so Whoa. nice. So you they said always you didn't play. Do this stuff. I know. I, I played other. I played other of. I played other. Um, uh, I, I've played um Exerd and I've played um Yeah, so like you know the lobby that has little blue. like figures in it and you like kick a little soccer ball yeah. around right, for a match to start. Yeah. <laughs> Me personally, I've always hated those. Okay. Me I, I, I just like I just want a menu that means me and my friend are about to fight and then we fight and then and then it's over. Yeah, Street Fighter Five is good for that, Tekken's good for that, old sorta. Of, yeah. Um but um, but yeah, the game feels fantastic. Really fun to play. As a person who doesn't really like combo like me, it's really simplistic and really easy to get in. Um, and again, I really can't stress this enough. The online makes that game like it make it makes it it make it, it makes it viable. It makes it a playable experience for most people. So. Makes me really excited to finally play that game when it comes out next month. Um, Plus, it's a really great starting point for those who aren't into the Guilty Gear storyline. Because yes, you don't know. Oh my god, Guilty Gear has a storyline. Oh, there's so much in that storyline. And this is meant to be like a soft reboot to it. So like for those who have played the past games, you're still going to get shit. But for those who haven't, you can still play this. And like, so for those who don't know, Guilty Gear doesn't have a normal story mode like most fighting games do, like where it's like cutscene, fight, cutscene, fight. No, Guilty Gear is like a fucking anime film. You just sit there with a bowl of popcorn and watch the story go. Like, you don't play anything. You just like watch like animated cutscenes happen. They fight in the cutscenes, kind of, but you don't do the fights yourself. 
you just watch it play out and you play the individual character story story lines to see where they go in the campaign but you don't really play it you just watch it so like i so for context i was in the alpha last year i was in the technical alpha it played really good i am i just play soul so i'm like oh that's, mm-hmm. yeah that's cool yeah. but like yeah, hearing you say had- how much Huh? Yeah, that technical, that technical alpha was delay based. Still, that's yeah. they just announced they're going to do rollback, and that was still technical. That was still that was still delay based. Okay. And now it's 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 perfect. It's literally perfect. Yeah, like hearing you talk about how easy it is to get combos in Guilty Gear because I don't normally play fighting games. I played mm-hmm. Street Fighter for the story, and that was it. So, like playing Guilty Gear, like that's a fighting game that I play. I play it online. I play it with my friends. I watch the camp the 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 uh, campaign i play that game so to hear you say someone who's like still new to like you know, to hear how easy it is to do like combos and stuff that's what i've always liked about this franchise is if you're not good at fighting games like i am you play this game and you 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 feel like you kick so much ass because the combos are so easy to do and they're so easy to figure out that when you're playing you're like oh my god i'm like winning games without getting hit I'm pulling off the like kick ass like special moves for these characters really, really easily. It just feels good to play if you're not a fighting game person, at least at least to me. And I know you're different because you are a fighting game person. But for mm-hmm. me, someone who's not really, I love playing Guilty Gear because it makes me feel like I'm good and then I'm having fun without being good. You might also like um the Persona 4 arena games are really um really beginner friendly because i I'm, I'm shit at fighting games and the way like even something as simple as like putting all the uh special attacks exclusively to like back quarter and forward quarter combinations really makes it easier to get into it um and I believe I it's know, the same guilty developer gear, right yeah uh yeah guilty guilty gear just feels really smooth to me it's it's different for like a fighting game at least to me and uh, again mesa's gonna know more about this than i am because i don't play fighting games i play mortal Kombat. like that's it so it's like playing playing guilty gear it just feels so smooth and so like easy to get shit out and it's got such a crazy cast of characters that are so completely different and for those who don't know guilty gear is like jojo it's just all old 80s metal references uh i also also, one thing I do I want to mention is how I, while I hate the lobby system, one part, I, one aspect about it I really think is cool is the tower. So the tower has different floors in it, and depending on your your your, your skill level, your rank, uh, you have access to certain floors. Uh, you oh, know, if you're yeah. if you're if you're a new person, you have access to all of them, and as you get better and you start winning more, you actually lose access to the lower levels. Um, oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, However, the, on on the surface, there's ten floors. Uh, there's a secret eleventh floor in the tower that you can only get there when you have a really really good win ratio. And if you lose two games, you lose access to it. Ooh, wait. So, like in general, you lose access to it? <laughs> yeah, usually you can't go back up there. You have to you have to re earn your way back in there. <laughs> so I, I think I think that's really cool. All right. But that's um you know I already talked about some Nautica last week. Um I've played more of Bowser's Fury. Um that game really feels like a proof of concept of the next Mario game. Um and that's pretty much that's pretty much been my week. Quick question on on that last point. Um okay. is there any real tangible reason why that runs at 30 frames versus the 60 of the of the base game? Uh, it's just it, it's just the, the 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 fact that it's the entire world open at once. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go over my stuff real quick. I think I think I mentioned it slightly last week. Um, I kind of just messed around with Resident Evil Five because I just felt like it. Um, can we call up Resident Evil Five, please? That's the good one. We, we can talk, but yeah, we can talk about it for a little bit. But I, I have some very specific we, points I want to talk about for the. PC no, no, version. like, can we co-op that? Like, I, listen, six. Oh, actually, actually, you know what? I, 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 I meant to message you, Sarah. Um, what? I might just go in and continue Resident Evil Six by myself because I don't want to torture you with that. But I do, do five, believe please? me and Mesa are are doing five. Uh, yeah, no. we're, we're we're like four hours in. We're like four hours in. <sighs> we haven't played in a minute, but. Yeah, um, it's, it's up on we YouTube, should try to make so. we should try to make space big time like this oh. week or so 
Um, sure. Can we, can we do thing? Diablo three then? Yeah, we can do that. Because I because I want to play Diablo with you, PS4 and we can get uh, we can get yeah we can get Blaine on it too because because it's four four player co op. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, for the PC version of Resident Evil Five, there's a couple of issues. Oh, One, Answer my a- question. Answer my question. One question. Are the subtitles left indented? <laughs> no, they are not. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, for whatever stupid reason, the subtitles on the PC version of Resident Evil 6 are all left indented. It is so fucking weird. We couldn't even concentrate on the cutscenes because we were too busy focusing on why would they put the subtitles they left were, in- They were left indented for like for, for you guys. Like they were legitimately like off to, it was like it was like mm. you're on Microsoft Word and someone hits that left indent button and just forgets that they hit it. So like a cutscene would be happening and you would think the cut the like subtitles would be at the bottom, you know, nah. Subtitles were to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it was so dumb. Yeah, but so the uh, the PC version of Resident Evil Five, it's it comes from the era of uh, games for Windows Live, so it just did not want to open at first whatsoever. So I had to uh, reach out to a buddy. Uh, thank you, Dio, friend of the show at DOMF, not Dio motherfucker. I forget what it stood for, but D- at DOMF for being a good boy. My uh, friend just, just kind of pointed towards the link, just like here, you have to download this for Games for Windows Live uh, legacy titles. But it worked after that, no problem. But um, I, I remember talking about like Resident Evil 7 a while ago on Twitter where I told people you should play that game with a gamepad even if you're on PC because playing with a mouse really ruins the game feel like you're supposed to have very slow movement. You're supposed to have very slow inaccurate aiming and having the power of a mouse kind of breaks the game and that is to such a fucking ridiculous degree in Resident Evil 5. So 4 and 5 they go off the a uh, laser pointer system and it, it's like outside of like being diegetic it has very limited accuracy you have to be a little bit more th- methodical if you're playing with the mouse it says nope fuck that here's like a pinpoint accurate cursor for like regardless of whatever weapon you're using and so like any semblance of balance just goes completely fucking out the window it is legitimately like like i was playing on uh whatever the step above veteran is i think it's professional whatever and it is just an easy, like, House of the Dead, like, shooting gallery. It, it is not even close. Um, like, and back in the Resident Evil 4 video essay I did, like, fucking two years ago, I think, or something, that these games are so specifically designed around um, the fact that you can't move while you're aiming, the fact that the aiming is relatively, air quote, bad. Like, everything is designed around that. So if you empower yourself... Uh, with this with, uh, with this aiming method but you don't fundamentally change the rest of the game it is, it is just broken on every single level i mean it's fun for shits and giggles going through like mopping the floor with all these enemies but that is in absolutely no way that you should have your original playthrough if that makes any sense because it i just don't think it's a good way to play the game and i actually talked to uh justin from uh SEGC, and he said he had a similar issue with the uh wii version of resident evil 4 which kind of had a similar aiming system albeit with motion controls and the wii motes but his uh his pointer aiming for the wii version of resident evil 4 was he said as it was disgusting and he finished the game with a 97 percent accuracy and 96 percent headshots that's how fucking accurate you can be and that's not how these games are meant to be played or it, it it's 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 fucking ridiculous uh don't don't play resident evil games with a mouse it it breaks it hmm. actually you know what? take that back you can play the, the remakes with a mouse they're fine it doesn't break the game but like four five n- n- there's no real mouse cursor aiming in four to that same extent it's you're still using the laser sight uh, don't play five. Don't play seven on the mouse. I don't think that's a controversial opinion. <laughs> Have either is anyone else? Or I think everyone here's played Resident Evil Five, right? Too many times to count. <laughs> does that, does that sound appealing at all to to use the mouse? I mean, with the way that Resident Evil Five runs on consoles, because it's like once you get used to the aiming on like a gamepad, it honestly isn't that hard to get a lot of headshots, especially when when, when the game's like, hey. Here's a bow and arrow where you, you need to like evolve it to get the like iron sight in it to make it easier to like see where you're like aiming. It's 
I mean, for me, I'm just used to aiming using a using like a gamepad and stuff. I've never tried it with a mouse. I'd be interested to try it with a mouse. Have you tried it in a house? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, stop. <laughs> I, I hate you. Okay, that one. That one was actually good. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you points for that one. It, it's even ridiculous to to a degree. Like even aside from like the pinpoint accuracy that you're able to spin around on a dime and just mm-hmm. like shoot people left and right. It's it's a fun way to play. <laughs> I'll give it that. And in, a, in its own way, a very <clears throat> indirect accessibility mode. So I'll give it that. Um, let's see. I, I did some Resident Evil 2. I'll probably get into that another time. We're already um, in 30 seconds going to be over. <laughs> I would everybody. just like to say real quick that I played Little Nightmares 2 and it was really fun. And I love that series so much. I need to play it. I need to play And also everybody should get Valheim because it's really fun. <laughs> um I'm still playing through Sackboy Adventures. I think I might have oh, glitched. I started my that cyber- today with my girlfriend. It's, it's, it's hella fun. fun. Uh, I think I might have glitched my cyberpunk gameplay and I might have lost like 80 plus hours or like 50 plus hours. I forgot what I was at. So oh, I haven't touched that in a couple weeks due to intense anxiety. <laughs> Are you gonna go back eventually? I'm going to hopefully go back eventually and see if I didn't fuck myself over. Well, no, I, but I, I'm I, still I, really filled think, with anxiety. I think there's context we need to add to this. And maybe this is just more of a PC background thing. Um, Mason, you might be able to back, to back me up on this. And for, for like PC background games, like there, there was, and even in games in general, there was, there was a giant period where auto saves were not a thing. So you have to manually save. And, and specifically for some PC games, like, um, I forget if it's rolling saves, if I use the same one, but basically I use every possible save slot I can. So that way, if something happens, you can go back to a previous one if you need to, like, make a different decision or if there's a bug. But, uh, Sarah, it would seem as if you were using the same save. Yes. Is this correct? Yes, I was. Yes, I, I, do was. Not, I do not blame you. It is not your fault. Yes, I, I know. Uh, the it quick, is- quick context was I went in to do a side uh, side quest and I killed the person I was supposed to kill incredibly quickly because I was overpowered for the side for the side quest. And I killed every everybody, but I accidentally killed like one civilian and the cops were like, hey, you. And I was like, oh, no. So I like ran out to get away from the cops and I drove a bit away from the side quest. But the side quest was still active because I was still like in the general area. And I got stuck in combat mode. And I was like, oh, that's fine. Maybe if I just go start another side quest, it'll take me out of combat. Well, I went to start another side side quest, beat that side side quest incredibly fast, did not take me out of combat. And the game couldn't save, couldn't like auto save because it was still telling me I was in combat, even though I was like walking down the street. So I don't know. And I couldn't and and it wasn't giving me uh, experience either. Because, you know, I was in combat mode, so it wasn't going to give me experience. Because how could I finish the quest if I wasn't in combat? So now I'm slightly scared. I think I'm going to be stuck in combat mode. That means I can't finish anything and not get experience for anything. So I have one fear. How, and how I one fear back, is losing 50 plus hours. How far back would that set you, though? Uh, Only, like, two side quests. But for anyone who's played... Oh, uh, that's Park not bad. I thought you said it was, like, 50 that's hours. That's a lot of shit. Lose. Well, like, I'm, I would lose... Because I'm literally right at the end of the game. I'm trying to do the secret suicide mission ending. Which is literally, if you die, the game goes straight to credits. And it doesn't count as you beating it. <laughs> so I'm like... So I'm like, uh, okay, I have to level up. And after I googled it, everyone was like... We, we recommend you are either close to or at max level before attempting this ending. And I was like 10 levels away from like max. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to power level and get to max. I was at level like 43 when the game was like, you're stuck in combat mode. And I went, no. Well, I think I it's so just close. those two side quests. That shouldn't be too much to. I don't to know where on. the last autosave was though, because I was stuck in combat. <laughs> the autosave isn't that great but it's not super it's terrible it's not terrible either. i will say that while the game's broken as hell and keanu reeves won't love me back the, the autosave isn't terrible the autosave could be a lot uh, this is a, like this a, is a wild point. tangent there's this what? movie called knock knock with keanu yes reeves. i know what you're talking thr- about the weird keanu reeves and the two hot chicks don't know what the plot that, is I just know that, the that movie. movie gave me so much anxiety my girlfriend was watching I'm just like i'm just gonna go to i'm just gonna read the wikipedia article and i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> 
But no, it's like I'm scared I'm going to lose a lot of time. And in Cyberpunk, two missions might not seem like a lot, but the driving between two missions they're, is a lot. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> their real time lost was the 80 hours you already put in. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> like, so I haven't touched that in a while. But I'm almost done with Sackboy. I'm halfway through the medium. I'm <laughs> I'm getting a copy of The Darkness delivered to me on Tuesday so I can play that. Um, and I'm going to start Control again once I get my brand new fancy TV on Tuesday so I can play at 60 FPS, 4K UHD, and I can play with the game running smooth as butter. Because I've been wanting to play Control again where the game doesn't slow down when I pick up one piece of paper. And the and whole gonna, game goes like, we're going to play at PowerPoint speed. And you're going to get that like, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet, sweet ray tracing. Hell yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm hyped, man. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm getting a new TV delivered on Tuesday. It's my early birthday gift. So I get to who I get to play stuff at the right resolution. Important so. question for you, though, Sarah yes. and Corey. And I think, yes. actually, you know what? Mace is not going to be aligned with me. Are you part of the uh, ray tracing gang or are you part of the uh, performance gang? Uh, I honestly Why don't did you care. just dab? I don't Because 60 I FPS superior. <laughs> It depends <laughs> on the game It depends yeah, on I the game Yeah I honestly don't care I am in Spider-Man You don't gotta choose right? It lowers population density If you choose both uh, you don't really Yeah I honestly I don't care You're doesn't flying matter. above You're flying at like it, Mach it's, it's also speed purportedly With your web Above the city anyway what, what does that matter It's purportedly A glitchier experience From what I've <laughs> I've not tried it myself That's just what I've heard Flying at mock speed and Mock speed web slinging but yes Join the uh, 60 <laughs> FPS game No stop. If you dab One more fucking time Don't you fucking <laughs> Jose Alright okay. well, no. Bye guys <laughs> yep bye <laughs> bye but uh right. i think that's gonna go ahead and wrap everything up all right um so two things t- or fuck what was the first thing i don't even remember shit one thing that i remember <laughs> off the top of my head um everyone here is gonna be playing through the medium at some point or another we'll go ahead and do a spoiler talk episode with our thoughts um after i render all these videos you might think i'll probably get started on that uh, monday night uh, so tomorrow night, um, I just want to go ahead and thank everyone for being on the show and everyone for watching. Uh, everyone's ads are on screen. Please go ahead and support everyone and everything that they do. Uh, like, comment, and all the socials. Uh, this podcast is filmed live at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. It's later available on podcast services as well as YouTube in both full segments um, as the full episode and individual segments for easier digestion. Um, I occasionally stream here on Twitch. If you follow me on Twitter, which is the best place to keep up to date with everything I do, you'll get updates as to when I'm planning streams. Currently playing through Resident Evil 3. Um, yes, and occasionally he'll pe- he'll appear on my channel and scream like a little baby. I did not scream. <laughs> I it just exerted high pitched noises from my from my orifice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. What was the second thing I was going to say? It was the medium. And what am I forgetting? Was it about Patreon stuff? I saw it on the doc. Yes, thank you, thank you. I forgot this. I am new to I am new to Patreon. I'm not used to having that in my little spiel. I forgot it to do at the beginning, and I kicked myself over that. Uh, I do have a Patreon now. It's mainly just to cover the cost of hosting the podcast on podcast services. I want to give a big shout out to Sly and Ramen Nomad for being my first two patrons. Um, patrons at the Super Patrons here at five dollars and up get early access to all my content, which is typically two weeks of daily content ahead of time. Uh, anyone else want to? Uh, want to uh shoulder stuff out uh you can check me out mondays and tuesdays at 6 p.m pacific standard time on twitch.tv slash celtic scribe also at 7 p.m pacific standard time on friday nights usually i play story-based games both fantasy and horror and Please don't swear, dab. Word, god dang it jose <laughs> <laughs> Leave dabbing back in 2015, please. Sarah, go ahead. Um, I'm not doing anything. I'm just playing a lot of World of Warcraft, and I, I apologize for all the World of Warcraft on your timeline if you follow me. That and all the really terrible uh my continuation of my of my uh Bell and Outlaw fan art that I've been recruiting because all of it's very, very good, and I'm very excited. But uh, I'm not doing anything. I'm sorry. I'm still working on that secret thing. I promise. 
I promise the secret thing is almost done. I just you know re- reach out to people and be like, "Hello, where's mm-hmm. where's the stuff I'm working on?" But uh, Mesa, I'm not cool. I promise, mm-hmm. but I'm here. Hi. I'm gonna be. I, I'm probably gonna be retweeting a lot of a lot of Street Fighter stuff. So, um, because this is this is a pretty 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 big deal. Um, uh, you know. Uh, play fighting games support your locals when they come back that's 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 all i gotta say all righty i think that's gonna go and do it thank you for everyone for being on thank you everyone for watching bye have a wonderful time bye have a beautiful time